Abbott. What time is it? It's time for the Abbott and Costello Show. We're on the air here in Hollywood. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go with the Abbott and Costello Show. It's the Abbott and Costello Show, produced and transcribed in Hollywood for your listening and laughing pleasure. Chuckles with a carload and music by Matty Malnick. So hold on to your chairs, folks, for here they are, Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. Yeah, please. All right, all right. Stop that racket. Where have you been? Stop the racket. Where have I been? Yeah. Uncle Mike just bought a new house. I'm out to see it. Well, how far is it from here? Fifteen minutes by automobile and five minutes if you walk. Wait a minute. How can it be? How can it be faster if you walk? When you're walking, you pass a skunk farm. I... <laughs> Must be a lovely place. The way it's laid out. If you, if you want to go into the kitchen, you go through the dining room, through the maid's room. If you want to go to the master bedroom, you go through the living room, through the maid's room. And if you want to go to the patio, you go through the den, then through the maid's room. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> Why do you keep going through the maid's room? Silly boy. <laughs> Will you please talk, says? Tell me more about Uncle Mike's place. Oh, I will. Well, he ran out of water, uh, out of the swimming pool, and he filled it with peroxide. He filled the pool with peroxide? Yeah. What for? He's nuts about blondes. Uh, <laughs> By the way, how is Aunt May uh, getting along with Uncle Mike? Just fine. You know, Mike is expecting a blessed event at their house next Tuesday. Well, wait a minute. They've been married for 35 years, and they're expecting a blessed event. Mike's mother-in-law is leaving for Patterson. <laughs> well, there's a sample of the high-grade nonsense you'll be hearing for the next half hour. But before we get back to it, Listen to this. circles under your eyes, and you look terrible, Lou. I can't help it, Abbott. I've been up all night working on my invention. I just finished my latest invention. It's a cellophane mattress for old maids. Oh, now, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but what good would a cellophane mattress be to an old maid, Lou? Well, she could look under the bed to see if there's a guy under there without getting up. <laughs> yeah, but no, you and your inventions, you, you're wasting your time. I think I, you got something there. But really, I'm not. Get a load of this, this invention. My sister and I, we're working on it now. We're crossing a roll of pink ribbon with a rubber plant. What for? So we can raise ladies' gutters. I... <laughs> when I look at you, Costello, I wonder how you ever became such an enormous idiot. Well, it's easy. I could teach you in no time. I... You dope your entire family, you stupid. None of them knows anything. Now, wait a minute. Ah, now, I said... just a minute. Now, how can you... How can you say that? My Aunt May is considered an expert authority on insects. An authority on insects? Hmm. Did she study insects in college? She didn't have to go to college. She studied at home. <laughs> now, wait a minute. How could she study insects at home? Her first three husbands were barflies. Oh. <laughs> now, uh, 
Are you still living with your Aunt May and Uncle Mike? No, I decided I wanted a nice place to stay, so I reserved a room at the YWCA. You idiot. The YWCA is full of girls. Isn't that a nice place to stay? <laughs> so, uh, you like girls, I gather. I like girls anybody gathers. <laughs> you idiot. All you think of is girls. Am I tempted by girls? No. When a girl flirts with me, do I flirt back? No. Why, why I could go out with a different girl every night, but I, do I do it? No. Look, Abbott, all the little kitties are asleep now. Let's tell them the right answers. I... <laughs> help! Help! Please, somebody help me! Somebody's got to help me! Who was that? I don't know, but he came in twice. <laughs> Did you know him? Hey, yeah, yeah. That was little Johnny from the Philip Marr show. He finally found a store window he couldn't step out of. Now, Costello, be careful what you say about that little Johnny. You know, I've heard he's a pretty tough kid. I ain't afraid of him. I could fight that little Johnny with one hand tied behind his back. You mean one hand tied behind your back? Who's fixing this fight, you or me? <laughs> if you're so tough, Costello, why don't you enter the heavyweight division? You know, Joe Lewis is retired, and they're looking for a new champion. There's only one reason why I don't become heavyweight champion, Abbott. I'm so tough and ferocious, I can't control myself. The minute I get in the ring, I see blood. It's terrible. What's terrible about it? It's my blood. (laughs) You couldn't fight your way out of a paper bag. Is that so? You're talking to a man who can lick anybody. Why, I'd take that Joe Lewis apart and see what makes him tick. I'd take Joe Walcott apart and see what makes him tick. I'd take Lee Savold apart and see what makes him tick. I'd take Gus Lesnovich apart and, and any champion. Name any champion and I'll take him apart. All right, I'll give you an easy one. How about the uh, swimming champion, Esther Williams? Could you take her apart? Anything put together that good don't need tinkering with. <laughs> Castello, you're yes? a moronic, silly nincompoop. Thank you, Abbott, and remember, I'm not one of those phony jerks. I'm the real thing. <laughs> Costello, you're hopeless. No wonder you have no friends. Why, even Susan Miller won't talk to you anymore. And do you know why? Why? Because you don't know how to treat a girl. Then why are certain types of women crazy about me? What kind of women are crazy about you? Crazy women? (laughs) All right, Costello, let's see what you know about women. Let's say we're in the uh, mm, Palladium Dance Hall. Now, I'm a girl. Now, you walk up to me and you ask me for a dance. What's your name? Oh, what's the difference? What difference is that? You don't expect me to dance with a girl I don't know, do you? Now, listen. All right. My name is Louise. Is that all right? How come you pick Louise? What's the difference? Any girl's name. Louise. Now, go ahead and ask me to dance. Louise, would you like to sit this out? (laughs) Sit it out? Why don't you ask me to dance? You don't think I'm going to get out there on the floor in front of all those people with an ugly-looking tomato like you? (laughs) Come in. Good evening to you all. Casella, this girl is beautiful. Uh, where are you from, miss? Down south. I come from the tobacco country. Are there any more gorgeous girls like you down in the tobacco country? Why, it's just full of them. No wonder that F.E. Boone can't talk straight. Oh, <laughs> What's your name? Hmm? Magnolia Tweety Faddle. <laughs> My, but that's a pretty dress you have on. Oh, thank you all. I try to be neat. My mother's a good housekeeper. She taught me to keep everything tidy and in the right place. Hand me my dust cap, Abbott. This is the kind of housekeeping I like. <laughs> Costello, it's very sweet of Miss uh, Tweedle Faddle to drop in here to see us. And I think, I think it would be a sweet gesture on your part, uh, Costello, if you'd show her the sights of Hollywood while she's in town. Oh, Mr. Costello, if you only would, then I could go home and tell all the girls I was out with a big, smart celebrity. If you do that for me, I'll give you anything you want. Anything? Anything. Now, what do you want? Could I have a pool cue with my own initials on it? <laughs> You idiot. A kiss would be ample reward for a beautiful girl like that, Lou. Yes. 
Come here, Mr. Costello, and I'll give you a real southern kiss. Why General Sherman marched to the sea. He had to go down there to cool off. <laughs> you know, I just can't understand you know the men. Why, in Kentucky, the men are so impetuous, they carry a girl away. In California, we got cars. <laughs> uh, pay no attention to Costello, Miss uh, Tweedlefaddle. Uh, tell me, are you a single girl? Oh, yes, indeed. And I came up north to get married. Well, I don't like to brag, but I'd make a nice husband. Uh, I can cook. And what's the matter with me? I can sew. And I, I can do housework and, and wash dishes. And I know how to take care of babies and do the washing. Well, congratulations. I hope you two be very happy together. <laughs> Bye, you all. Costello, you, you missed a great opportunity. That girl is the daughter of Colonel Tweedlefaddle. They're very wealthy. Yeah, but I got a notion to put on one of my Sam Shovel detective disguises and follow that girl. Mr. Costello, Mr. Costello, I've got to talk to you. I'm Costello. What can I do for you? Mr. Costello, I've been listening to your detective series, and I think you're marvelous as Sam Shovel, the great detective. And Mr. Shovel, I need your help. My wife has disappeared. When did she disappear? Yesterday morning at 7 o'clock. She left the house dressed in a nightgown. She had a frying pan in one hand and a box of matches in the other. Mm-hmm. Sounds like a pretty tough case. You say she left the house yesterday morning at 7 o'clock wearing a nightgown and carrying a frying pan and a box of matches? Do you have any idea why she left the house? Oh, sure. She was cooking breakfast and the stove blew up. <laughs> hey, you know, there was something familiar about that guy. Costello, isn't uh, he your brother-in-law? No, sir. My brother-in-law is living. Go <laughs> But before it gets too thick, let's interrupt it for another reminder on a serious subject. Spotlight turns to Hal Winters, our singing star. Here he is with Matty Malnick and his orchestra. Somebody's lying when she says, I don't care. Somebody's lying and she's not playing fair. Somebody's lying when she says that I'm untrue. She says 
gone untrue. You know I'll never love no one but you. Somebody's hoping we'll break up someday. Waiting and hoping you'll send me away. Don't you believe what someone else is saying? Somebody's lying, sweetheart. Somebody's lying, sweetheart. Somebody's lying, sweetheart. Hey, Evan! You know, it looks like you'll have to get some new girls, Lou. How about those two girls that moved in next door to you? They're strangers in town. Why don't we double date them? Oh, I don't think you'd like them, Abbott. One of them has three warts on her nose, she's got buck teeth, and she's bald-headed. <laughs> How about the other one? She's ugly. <laughs> <laughs> Costello, you've got, as much, you've got about as much chance of getting a girl as Laurel and Hardy. They married? <laughs> married? They're not married to each other. They're partners, just like Sears and Roebuck. Sears and Roebuck, ain't they married either? Mm, of course not. Ain't that a shame, with all that nice furniture they got, too. <laughs> Where were you last night? Well, I had a day with our secretary, Viola Vaughn. She took me to the Palladium, and she wouldn't dance with me. Then she took me out to the House of Murphy for dinner, but she wouldn't eat with me. Well, if she, she wouldn't dance or eat with you, what did she take you for? $35. I... <laughs> Throwing your money around like that. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Right now, I need $75, and I don't know where to get it. Why, Abbott, you must have 100 friends that would loan you $75. Well, how about you loaning it to me? Abbott, you must have 99 friends that would loan you $75. <laughs> I ought to know better than ask a stupid, ignorant dope like you for money. Ah, 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 just a second now, just a second. Don't call me stupid and ignorant. I'm a college man. For years, I went to Stanford University in the morning and UCLA in the afternoons. Uh, you dummy. Stanford is in San Francisco, and UCLA is in Los Angeles now. How could you go to both of them at the same day? Being an honor student, I had a long lunch hour. <laughs> honor student. How did you ever get to be an honor student? Well, I took the brain of a monkey and I put it in the head of a man. And today that man is alive and can talk. What does he say? Hey, happy! <laughs> thought so. You've never been in a college. And I doubt if any of your family were ever in college. Is that so? My brother Pat spent four years at the medical school at the University of Michigan. What was he uh, studying? Nothing. They were studying him. I... <laughs> Costello, you're impossible. And you'd better give up doing that Sam Shovel detective series. The field is overcrowded and everybody on Riddy wants to become a private eye. You're right, Abbott. I know it. Seems like every Tom and Harry wants to be a dick. <laughs> Thank you, Nita. That ain't gonna stop me, Abbott. Tonight I'm gonna do one of my most famous cases. I call it murder in a butcher shop. Or have you seen those prices lately? <laughs> well, that, that doesn't sound like a very interesting case, Costello. Pick another one. Okay, here's a very, very interesting one. I call it the case of the man who drowned in the Los Angeles River. Or dust be my destiny. <laughs> oh, let's get on with the case. <laughs> The makers of Sludge Motor Oil present The Adventures of Sam Shovel, private detective. But first, a word about our product. Motorists, have you been changing your oil every month? Switch to Sludge. When you use Sludge, you never have to change oil. Of course, every six months you'll have to get a new car. <laughs> If you want extra mileage, use Naco gasoline. Listen to what one of our satisfied customers has to say. I bought two gallons of Naco gasoline in Chicago. When I got into Los Angeles this morning, I still had two quarts left. Thank you, sir. Thank you. 
What kind of a car do you drive? Who's got a car? I got a cigarette lighter. <laughs> Adventures of Sam Shovel, Private Detective. Yes, I'm Sam Shovel, Private Detective. I'm sitting here in my little office writing a report on my latest case. I reach for my pen. It's a pig pen. (laughs) I'm alone in the office. I used to have a secretary. I had to let her go. She could never get her typing done. Every time she got to the end of a line, the typewriter bell would ring. She'd go out to lunch. (laughs) I'm getting sick of this detective business. Always on the run. I don't even get a chance to eat. Last night, I sat down to a bowl of chicken broth. I started to eat the broth. The phone rang. I had to go out and catch a crook. I came back, started to eat the broth again. Another call came. I had to go out and catch another crook. When I came back, the broth was cold. The moral, too many crooks spoil the broth. (laughs) Suddenly, I hear a woman scream. (laughs) Came from the window across the street. I can't see who it is. I reach for my opera glasses. They're gone. Must have gone to the opera again. (laughs) I turn to my file. There on top is one of my most famous cases. The case of the Lady Bluebeard. I don't know why they call her the Lady Bluebeard. She never killed anybody. Maybe it was because she had a blue beard. She was a hard woman to catch. I'd have never caught her except she was a flirt. She gave me the eye in Pasadena. She gave me the eye in Pomona. Then I caught her in Pisno Beach. It was easy. I had both her eyes. It was lost. Couldn't see where she was going. Suddenly through the window I see my pal. Lieutenant Abbott of the Homicide Squad approaching. Abbott's a tough man. He's got a dirty look and underwear to match. (laughs) Hello, Sam Shovel. I'm worried. What's wrong, Lieutenant Abbott? Remember when I joined the department, I found it a beat, and the walking made my feet too big? Yes. And then I was transferred to the traffic department, and waving my arms all day made my hands too big. Yes. Now I'm really worried. They want me to ride a horse. <laughs> I looked at Lieutenant Abbott. What a clever policeman. He's got a trigger mind, and he ought to give it back to Trigger. <laughs> I could tell Lieutenant Abbott had something on his mind. He was nervous. He started fiddling with his nose. (laughs) (laughs) Lieutenant Abbott had a tough day at headquarters. All day he had been given a rubber hose the third degree. He kept hitting it with a detective. (laughs) Sam... You can help me. You've got friends in the department. You've got plenty of drag. What makes you think I've got drag? Turn around, Sam, and see what you're dragging. (laughs) (laughs) Lieutenant Abbott has insulted me again. I looked him straight in the eye. He had arrogance, conceit, and meanness written on his face. Seems silly for a man of his age to go around with all those words written on his face. It's very warm in here. Why don't you open that door that leads to the balcony? I can't. I haven't got a key, and I don't know how to open it. Why don't you use your head? I don't think my head will fit in the keyhole. (laughs) Hello, Sam. 
Sam Shovel, private detective speaking. Is this the great Sam Shovel, the private detective? That's me. Sam, you've got to help me. What's the matter? There are five tough bugs with guns and clubs trying to break in here and kill me. Come right over. I can't hear you. There are five tough guys with guns and clubs trying to kill me. Come right over. I can't hear you. <laughs> Sam, I'm not even on the phone and I can hear her. Why don't you go over? questions. Go on. Reach for the ceiling. Okay, we reach the ceiling. What's the idea of this stick-up? This ain't no stick-up. Then why have you got us standing here with our hands on the ceiling? Me and my crew are a pair in this building. We're ready to tear out the walls, and somebody better be holding up that ceiling. <laughs> Lieutenant Abbott, this seems kind of silly. You and me standing here holding up the ceiling. Yes, Sam. It's probably something the writers thought up because they were stuck for a finish. It's ridiculous. Let's put our hands down. (laughs) Next time, we better play along with the writers. Them guys can kill you. through with you yet. Right now, they want you to hear this. Tickets to the Blanos Williams fight on the 29th, please. What name? Paul Douglas. The actor? <laughs> That's what it says in my contract. Well, I thought you'd be in St. Louis on the 26th for the opening of It Happens Every Spring. Well, I'll be there, but I'm flying back for this great champ battle. It's for the benefit of the kids at the Lou Costello Jr. Foundation, and it's to help juvenile delinquency. And that's good enough to get my support. Our writing staff is headed by Eddie Foreman with Paul Conlon, Pat Costello. Our producer is Charles Vander. Good night, folks. Good night, everybody. It's Patterson. Good night. Enjoying the timeless classics on Golden Age Radio? If you're loving the nostalgia and captivating stories, consider supporting our channel with a tip. Your generosity helps us continue bringing you the best of vintage radio entertainment. Simply click on the link in the description. Thank you for being part of our community. Lost in Brazil invites you on an unforgettable journey where every moment is an adventure waiting to be discovered. Join us as we uncover the soul of Brazil, one incredible experience at a time. Click on the link in the description and embark on the ultimate Brazilian odyssey. You have been listening to Golden Age Radio, rumble.com slash C slash G-A-R, brought to you by G3PL.com. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos. I would like to extend my sincere gratitude to Old Time Radio Research Group for their remarkable efforts in preserving and archiving the captivating world of old-time radio programs. 
Their dedication to safeguarding these precious audio gems ensures that future generations can relish the enchanting stories, music, and entertainment of the past. Their invaluable contribution allows us to step back in time and experience the magic of radio history firsthand. Their link is in the description below.